here we go again. It's Alan Young, very deep in trouble. And as usual, we gotta dig him out. Listen to that young man who tries to be helpful and always needs help himself. Alan Young! <laughs> Well, Alan is a very discouraged man. He, he's just decided to give up his girl, Betty, to his rival, Hubert Updike. It seems Hubert has what it takes to make a girl happy. About $50 million worth. Well, let's peek over Alan's shoulder as he writes Betty his farewell letter. Now, how shall I start this letter? Betty was the most precious thing in the world to me. Ah, to whom it may concern. <laughs> Dear Betty, I, I think it's best you marry Hubert. You need a man of, of great wealth. I realized that the night I took you down to the Penny Arcade. <laughs> you ran through a dime like mad. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's goodbye, my sweet one. Goodbye. But remember, memories linger. You'll be with me wherever I go. Of course, when I go to the YMCA, I'll have to hang around outside. <laughs> It's, it's tough for Betty to lose a guy like me, you know. I haven't got money, but otherwise I'm complete. <laughs> Just look at that body. <laughs> I, I got everything. Magnificent trousseau. <laughs> massive jutting shoulder blades. Why, I look like the great John L. I don't know about John, but you sure look like L. <laughs> It's little David. So you think I look like... <laughs> oh, bless you, a little. Now, I'm... David, I'm breaking off with your sister Betty, you know. There won't be any more of those romantic evenings with her. Those, those sessions we had were pretty warm. Yeah, I watched them. It was all smoke and no fire. <laughs> From a guy who was in the Navy, you didn't get much basic training. <laughs> Well... What made you decide to give up my sister, Mr. Young? Did you catch her with her makeup down? <laughs> no, David, I just felt she'd be better off with Hubert. After all, marriage is an expensive proposition. There's that big initial investment of two dollars. Then in a, in a year or so, there may be other little expenses. You mean... Sure. Plumbing doesn't last forever, you know. <laughs> need money to get married. Mm. When my uncle married my aunt, he only had a nickel. Where'd he get the money for the license? He put the nickel in a slot machine and won two dollars. Mm. My uncle says it was the first time it took three plums to win a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> David, sometimes a wife can be such a nuisance. You come home at night and what happens? Your beautiful wife is waiting with open arms. She starts to kiss you and hug you and cuddle you. You wouldn't like that, would you, kid? Not right now, but I got post-war plans. <laughs> well, Mr. Young, I hope you know what you're doing. See you later. So long, David, boy. I'll get back to this letter. Hey, wait a minute. What's that big limousine doing in front of my house? It's a 16-cylinder Cadillac with a Packard for a rumble seat. Hmm, that important-looking man stepping out. But he's a banker for a tycoon. Oh, he looks too wealthy to be a banker. Must be a butcher. <laughs> hey, walking up to my porch. <laughs> uh, yeah? Uh, how do you do? I'm Percival Updike. Ah, you're Hubert Updike's father. The famous multi-billionaire, Percival Updike. Well, I'm, uh, I'm Percival Updike to my business associates. <laughs> I ruined them all. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> to those very close to me, I am P.U. <laughs> Well, uh, won't you come into my house, uh, Mr. Updike? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> must excuse how things look, but I'm packing to go visit my folks in Canada. Takes quite a while to get up there, you know. Well, uh, in Canada, huh? Do you go by Buffalo? Yeah. <laughs> Clumsy beast. <laughs> I, I must say the way my son, my boy... My son, the way he talked of you, I, I didn't think you could afford a trip to Canada. Oh, but of course, my, my mater insists upon it. 
<laughs> You'll notice I used the word mater. <laughs> Good old dad. <laughs> Won't you uh, sit down, Mr. Updike? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Young man, I uh, I wanted to discuss a business proposition with you. Business? Why, why certainly. You uh, you smoke? Yes, I do. Uh, will you please keep your ashes off the rug? <laughs> <laughs> Pro proceed, Mr. Updike. Mr. Young, as you know, I am the richest man in the world. Except for Uncle Bim, of course. <laughs> And uh, Hubert, my son, that's my son, he's my only child. His mother was my eighth wife. I think she was my eighth wife. Let's see. The sixth kept a Pomeranium, the seventh had appendicitis, and the eighth had Hubert. <laughs> he's a boy, you know. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, I love Hubert dearly. Oh, I know how you feel. Uh, my father loved children. He would have given anything if I'd been one. <laughs> I have... Uh, yes, yes. I've spared no expense M mother's money could buy. <laughs> but, uh, alas, and disappointed in him. He's running around with a wild, reckless, burlesque dancer. Oh, that, that's too bad. It certainly is. I saw her first. <laughs> Mr. Young, I want you to win that girl away from Hubert, huh? my son. I know you can do it because Hubert has described you as a big, blonde, handsome brute of a man whose charm fascinates and overpowers every woman he meets. Oh, Mr. Updike. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> now, if you win that blonde away from my son, Hubert, who is my son, I am... <laughs> I say I am prepared to pay you not much, uh, shall we say, four million dollars? Well, that's pretty... You're going to pay me four million dollars? Well, that, 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 that runs into hundreds. Uh, <laughs> then it's a deal. Uh, but the girl's name and address is on this paper, and I shall expect results by tomorrow. Oh. Goodbye, Mr. Young, and as they say in Spanish, hasta la vista. Goodbye, Mr. Updike. And as they say in Italian... Chicken cacciatore. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't mail this letter to Betty. Everything is so different now. A minute ago, I was destitute. In fact, I was so destitute, I didn't give a toot. <laughs> now, now I'm going to be rich. Hubert's father's going to give me four million dollars. Of course, I'll have to make love to a beautiful blonde burlesque dancer. That just goes to show you. There's no such thing as easy money. The tune twisters bring us a new rhythm song. It's got to be this or that. What to do, what to do, oh, what a riddle. Please give in. I've been taking. 
taking it on the chin. Okay, baby, you win. Gotta be that or this, gotta be this or that. Well, well, Alan's on his way to his girl, Betty, to tell her the good news. Meanwhile, at Betty's house, the wealthy Hubert Updike is telling her of his newfound love for a blonde burlesque dancer. Hubert, you mean to say that this burlesque dancer fell in love with you at first sight? Well, how could she resist me? <laughs> I'm so frightfully adorable. I'm just a great big woolly teddy bear. What kind of a girl is she, Hubert? She's just a sweet, unspoiled child who's led a sheltered life. She was brought up on a runway. <laughs> well, what's your name? Oh, it's a beautiful name. Tallulah. Tallulah Crotchmire. <laughs> Why, if dear old Dodd saw her, he would cancel all his marriages for the month of August. <laughs> I think it's awful the way your father goes around marrying people so often. Oh, Dodd has reformed. During the emergency, Dodd has given up all marriages on Tuesdays. He has? Yes, he insists on observing mateless Tuesdays. <laughs> oh, that was a witty one. <laughs> Everybody loves Dodd's wedding. They're, they're so different. What do you mean? Well, instead of the wedding march, the band plays, There Goes That Song Again. <laughs> Hubert, I think your ideas on marriage are all wrong. I believe that when a man marries a woman, he should stay married to her for the rest of her life. But Betty, they get old on you that way. <laughs> well, I wish you luck, Hubert. I hope you can find some happiness with your burlesque dancer. Oh, thank you, Betty. <laughs> I'm glad you don't feel too bad about losing me. And now, before I go out of your life, well, we've been so close to each other. Would I... Would I be a complete rascal if I... If I gave the lobe of your ear a tender tweak? <laughs> You've known me for ten years and showered me with costly gifts. Don't think you can take such liberties as giving my earlobe a tender tweak. You're right, Betty. Oh, the devil is in me tonight. <laughs> Hello, Betty. Hi, Hubert. Hello, Alan, you lucky boy. You can now marry Betty as I am engaged to a girl from the theater. Let's see, she dances with four doves. Poor Dove. Oh, I saw her dance once. They bounced me out of the theater. Why? I threw some chicken feet on the stage. <laughs> so now you and Betty will get married and live with poverty and squalor. Betty, we're going to take in boarders? <laughs> Poor Betty. She'll probably have eight or nine noisy children running around the house. Well, yeah, you know, the first year is always the hardest. <laughs> Betty would have been better off with me, though. I'm so educated. Why, I'm a college graduate. I'm Texas A&M. Ah, so what? Uh, I'm life boy, B&O. <laughs> Hubert, you don't have to worry about Alan and me. After we're married, we'll get along. There are plenty of jobs to be had, and I'm sure Alan will find one for me. <laughs> Wait a second, Betty. No wife of mine is going out to work. I'm not going to stay home alone. <laughs> well, I've got to go now and see Tallulah. Ah, who are you two? Van Steeden and the orchestra with a swell arrangement of Lady of Spain.
it looks like we're going to get married at last. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if a boy is going to marry a girl, don't you think it's all right if that boy kisses that girl? Betty, don't bother me with other people's problems. <laughs> Eleanor, I'm talking about us. In a very short time, the two of us will become one. Yeah. Won't there be something left over? <laughs> We'll be so happy after we're married. I'll sit at home, knitting little garments to fit over tiny little arms and tiny little shoulders. Oh, that's nice, Betty. I could use a new sweater. <laughs> Alan, how can you be so naive? Didn't your father take you aside and, and talk to you about things? Oh, yes, Betty, but there was so much noise in the pool room I couldn't hear. <laughs> not think too far ahead. Let's just think of this moment. The perfume of flowers is in the air. We're close together. You're a man and I'm a woman. Yeah. It's more fun when you get one of each. You said before you were going to make four million dollars. Mm. I realize you were exaggerating, but tell me, is it a new job? Yes, but I'm going to do a special job for Hubert Updike's father. I can't tell you what it is, but I'm I'm going to be sort of a of a separator. Well, will you be working on the assembly line? No, I think I'll do most of my work on the Davenport. <laughs> um, will it be day work or night work? Well, it could be done during the day, but you generally get better results at night. Well, Alan, work hard at it. Keep your mind on what you're doing, and someday you may get to own the business. <laughs> Gee, Betty, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Well, yeah. You have to excuse me now, Betty. I have to go to work. I have a big job ahead of me. Goodbye, Alan, dear. Uh, now, well, now to go over to that burlesque dancer's house. Be a cinch to make her fall in love with me. Just like Hubert's father says, I'm a, I'm a big, blonde hunk of beautiful man. Yeah, why, if I ever turned on all my charm, women would go mad. They'd leave their homes. They'd flock around me. Throw roses in my path, grovel at my feet, begging and pleading for kisses. <laughs> oh, young, you're crazy. Peter Van Staden with a new arrangement of Tico Tico. Updike's father has hired Alan to break up the romance between Hubert and a gorgeous blonde burlesque dancer. Alan's on his way to her house, but as usual, Hubert has gotten there first. Hubert, darling, you say you're mad about me, but you've never come to the theater to see me do my dance. Oh, I just couldn't survive it. <laughs> you know I'm nervously maladjusted. 
Miss Santa, I can't stand the idea of those men staring at you. But, Hugh, but I'm in show business. I know, but you show entirely too much. <laughs> ah, Tallulah, release your doves and marry me. I... <laughs> I can't marry you now, Hugh, but I have another boyfriend who's insanely jealous. Why, if he knew you were here now, he'd kill you. That must be him now. Oh, Mother, I've been ambushed. <laughs> You've been hard. But work on a hide. Oh, quick. Hide in that closet. Hurry. Hurry, hurry. Hurry. Just wait until I open this door. But I turn on my fatal charm. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We've talked enough. Let's next. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Uh, you have a nice, cozy little place here. <laughs> Come over here and sit down beside me. No, sit close beside me. Yeah, yeah, well, all right, I'll, I'll sit beside you. But I hope you don't expect anything to avoir le longue d'amour. <laughs> because you're not going to get it. Why not? I don't know what it means. Come close to me. Let me put my arm around your waist. Like this. Now I put my other arm around your neck. Like this. I bring my lips close to you. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do now? Yes, but I don't care. Go ahead, bite me on the nose. Go on. <laughs> no, big boy. I'm going to kiss you. Oh, no. I will not be kissed by a girl who wears lipstick. <laughs> All right. But what am I going to use to wipe off my lips? Use mine. <laughs> I'm just being accommodating, that's all. If you can make me enjoy a kiss, I'll be a Dutch uncle. You understand? I'll be a Dutch uncle. Well, here goes. Only five minutes to get any five minutes. Hey, Hugh, that was wonderful. This is the biggest thing since Seven Up. That must be my boyfriend. Quick, hide in the closet. Your boyfriend? You mean Hubert Updike? Oh, no. This is my real boyfriend. Hide, quick. Where? Right in his closet. Okay, okay. Woo! Woo! Gee, it's dark in here. I can't see my hand in front of my face. Now, oh, what's the difference? I know what my hand looks like. <laughs> nice, comfortable closet. She even has a bag of candy here. A hard and round. Mmm. This camphor flavor will never be popular. <laughs> Feel around here, find out where I am. Ah, this must be a secret passage. It's so cold and clammy inside. Would you please take your hand out of my mouth? There's somebody else in here. I thought you gave me a single room. Where, where are you located, sir? Huh? I'm standing here in a pile of lingerie. I'm up to my knees in chemise. <laughs> Wait a second. I think I found a light switch. I'll just snap it on. Yeah. Hubert! It's Alan Young. Why, heavens to gimbal. <laughs> what are you doing in the closet of my girlfriend, Tallulah Crotchmire? Well, you see, the, the four million dollars and Betty and I was just knocking the door at him. <laughs> Why, I ought to... Wait a second, Hubert. Look, if you're in this closet and I'm in this closet, then the man out there must be Tallulah's real boyfriend. Well, I'm going out there and find out who it is. Yeah. Here, here I go. <laughs> Why, it's dear old Da, Hubert. Yeah. <laughs> Heavens to Abercrombie on fit. <laughs> i 
afraid you're too late, my boy. I'm going to make this girl my boy. I'm going to make this girl my wife number 27. We are to be married tomorrow at the little sub-treasury around the corner. Ah, Dodge, I think it would be you, my own flesh and allowance. <laughs> Don't feel too bad, Hubert. After all, that's such life for you. One day she's your girlfriend, the next day she's your mother. The Tone Questers, with an up-and-coming favorite, I'm gonna love that guy. I love the guy, and you can bet I'm not his sister. Cause when I kiss the guy, he's gonna get a blister. My kiss will be so hard to make up for those that he got not. I'm gonna love that guy like he's never been loved before. I'm gonna show that guy he's a fellow that I adore. When he's in my arms again, our dreams will all come true. Then the years between might never have been We'll start our lives anew I'm gonna kiss that guy like he's never been kissed before And though I miss that guy, he's the fellow I'm waiting for We'll never part again, he'll hold my heart again Forever and never more I'm gonna love that guy like he's never been loved before I've got a secret, I'll tell you if you won't repeat it. My boy and I will soon be greeted by Susan Rice. But still in the on ice. When we clinch again, it's the cinch again. Our parting will have an encore. I'm gonna love that. Now here's Alan Young. Thanks, Larry. You didn't have time to say good night, friends. Thank you very much. <laughs> This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.